Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back. Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer with you today. Okay, guys. So today I want to share with you just some ideas about what's called the fifth harmonic uh, chart. Now, there are many harmonic charts. In fact, um, you can go up to 32, you can go up to uh, even beyond that. Um, having said that, today's focus is going to be the fifth harmonic. It's a very, very important chart. Easy to draw up when you've got a um, astrology software. Um, I can show you how to do that in a moment through Solifier, for instance. Now, the fifth harmonic chart pertains to the fifth house. So the fifth harmonic chart is all about your creative expression. It's your creativity, your creative skills and talent. The fifth harmonic chart is all about showing you what's called uh, the quintile aspect. The quintile aspect is 72 degrees. And when you multiply it, it's 144 degrees. So when you're looking at your birth chart, it is not that easy unless you're uh, very technically minded or, or, or very skilled at astrology. It's not that easy to see the aspect that's known as the quintile or biquintile and so forth. So when you draw up a chart as a fifth harmonic, which is basically showing you the quintiles that exist in your actual birth chart, what you get to see is you get to see the quintile aspect right there in the fifth harmonic as a conjunction. So let me just say that again. In your birth chart, when you have two planets forming a quintile aspect, which is 72 degrees, in your fifth harmonic, those two planets will show up together as a conjunction. And that's, that's happening purely just to show you the visual of all the quintiles that you have in your birth chart. Now, if you've got the um, aspect setting in your program or whatever program you use online that enables to show quintiles you can see it in the grid to the left hand side where um, a grid will show up showing you all the different aspects between all the planets in your chart um, so that's one thing but the when you put up the fifth harmonic chart it's it's just really beautiful to see the the actual visual um, features of the quintiles in your chart, in your fifth harmonic chart, which derive from your birth chart. Now, just be very careful though, because um, conjunctions in your natal chart will also show up as conjunctions in the fifth harmonic chart. So you need to know your chart very, very well, so that you're not, when you put up the fifth harmonic chart, each time you see a conjunction, don't make the assumption that it's a quintile aspect you need to refer back to your natal and see what is naturally conjunct in your chart and what isn't so again a quintile aspect in your birth chart will show up as a conjunction in the fifth harmonic chart now the fifth harmonic chart as i said it's all about creativity art uh, the the creative expression and basically the planets that are quintile at each other that show up as a conjunction in the fifth harmonic chart, it is the combination of, of the planets that are in a quintile aspect that basically show you how your creative juices flow, um, what sort of creative style you have, and, and how you're going to about how you're going to go about expressing this creative style. And it's creativity in a myriad of forms, it's it's artistry essentially. So I had a quick look at Prince's chart, Prince, the artist, the singer who passed away a couple of years ago, who's one of my favourite, favourite musicians and favourite artists on this planet. I have many, but he's one of them. And um, he's got a very interesting uh, quintile aspect um, that shows up very strongly in the fifth harmonic. Um, and I'll, I'll go to that in a moment. I'll show you his natal and then I'll show you the fifth harmonic just so you can see the difference between the two charts. Um, so the planets emphasized in the fifth harmonic chart show your creative style, your creative endeavors, how you're going to go about achieving this creative expression. It's the creative juice that flows through you, that enables you to, um, to show your creative talent in, in whichever form that will be. 
Um, I'll use my own chart as an example as well. I won't actually show my chart. I don't really want to, but I'll just tell you what's in my fifth harmonic, um, which is very, very apt for, uh, for what I do with astrology and especially with these uh, teaching these videos and so forth. Um, it's our innate skills and talents that we can see through the fifth harmonic chart. You see, when you're looking at your birth chart, it's very easy to overlook these quintile aspects because they're not as obvious as the conjunction, the trine, uh, the square and the opposition. Those are the main aspects that people um, can generally pick up very quickly just by visually looking at the chart. The quintiles are a little bit more obscure, but if you, if you study aspects and you understand aspects, um, what you will learn about the quintile is that it is purely that beautiful, uh, expressive, creative energy and juice that flows within you. So whatever planets show up in your fifth harmonic are going to show you how you can activate and access that creative style, that creative expression, which you probably already are. Um, but it does help to see the fifth harmonic chart because you can, you can just see things visually and just tune into that energy a lot more and understand what it is about you that is ex extremely creative through uh, the particular planets that are in the quintile aspect, um, which is your creative uh, expression. Now, the other thing as well that's really useful uh, with the fifth harmonic chart, obviously, if if you're some kind of artist, whether it's, um, you know, drawing, painting, music, um, it can be astrology, um, it, it can be any form of creative expression. Uh, the other thing about the fifth harmonic chart, it's also a chart that reflects um, not only your creative expression, but where you are going to be most playful and, and where you will experience a lot of joy through this creative expression because the fifth house, which is the fifth harmonic chart, is all about joy and playfulness and feeling happy and expressing that part of yourself. You could say it's also tapping into the inner child. You know, the inner child is always within us. In some people, it is more active than in others. So there are, you know, um, there are certain features in the chart that might hide that inner child more than it would in another person's chart. So for example, someone who's got a lot of Leo energy in their chart, the Leo archetype being very strong, they naturally are attuned to this fifth harmonic energy anyway, because it is all about the fifth house. So it's somebody who's got um, a lot of earth energy, perhaps a lot of Saturn influences, you know, maybe their inner child is hiding a bit more so the fifth harmonic chart can really help this person tune into this um, playfulness, this creative expression, and in which ways will be best for them to activate that creativity within themselves and how they can actually um, create something with it in their life, what they can tune into that's going to really work for them on that creative expressive level. Also, if you're looking at charts, um, whether you're working with astrology professionally or even if you're just learning about astrology and you have children or you have friends who have children or you know somebody who's about to give birth to somebody, um, the fifth harmonic chart is a really powerful and beautiful chart to look at for little kids um, because the fifth harmonic chart is, is the child, you know, it's, and it's the creative talents that that child will have. So if you have somebody who has a small child and who wants a reading done for their child, one of the best things you can do apart from reading their natal chart is actually look at the fifth harmonic chart and have a look at what potential is there for, their, for the creativity of this child. And then the parent can consciously help this child cultivate this energy uh, to its best potential and, you know, um, nurture the fruit of what that fifth harmonic chart symbolises. Equally, you can do that for yourself. So doing uh, chart readings for small children, the fifth harmonic chart is a very powerful chart to do, uh, simply because, you know, that, that child can be guided and encouraged and nurtured into their natural innate creative juices and talents that are um, inherently there. So that's another purpose of doing the fifth harmonic chart. 
Um, so in my own chart, what I have is um, what shows up in my fifth harmonic chart is um, a triple conjunction with Jupiter, Mercury, and the Sun. Now I have a natal conjunction um, with the Sun and Mercury anyway, but I don't have a conjunction with Jupiter and Mercury or Sun and Jupiter. So what happens is in my birth chart, the Sun is actually forming a quintile to Jupiter and Jupiter is forming quintile to Mercury. So in my fifth harmonic chart, I, I see this triple conjunction of Sun, Jupiter and Mercury and it actually lands in the third house. Now that for me is my teaching of astrology. It's my love of wisdom. So my, my creative outlet, apart from dance, that's there too, uh, showing up in different ways. Um, but in terms of the astrology and teaching, it is um, seen through the expression of Sun, Jupiter, Mercury. Mercury is about communication, learning, teaching, information, sharing, knowledge, etc. And Jupiter is a component within me and conjunct my sun so it's my um, absolute soul of force expression that enables me to feel uh, incredibly creative is to share that jupiter energy to share the wisdom of jupiter which is teaching jupiter is all about teaching in a, in a number of different ways in in my situation it happens to be teaching astrology now i was thinking about this um just a few moments ago before i came on to do this video and I first started teaching astrology when I was in my very early 20s and nobody taught me, you know, how to teach astrology, um, how to put a course together, how to, you know, put everything together that entails teaching what I taught, which was a two-year two course in um, basic astrology, you know, an it's a, an introduction to astrology. Um, so anyway, I put this course together and I started teaching in my very early 20s. Now, Jupiter gives, you know, Jupiter is also the energy that gives um, uh, confidence, that natural sense of confidence to step into your, you know, whatever it is you're going to um, teach or share or experience regarding that Jupiter energy. So I had the confidence to, you know, teach in front of, 20 people in my very early 20s um, on my own completely Aries doing it on my own and um, just just basically writing that out and just seeing how it evolved and it evolved you know I, I created everything in terms of the structure uh, and the format of what I was going to present and teach over a two-year period um, but I've never done it before so it was stepping into new territory um, and it was a, a new experience for me, but it made me so, so happy. I loved teaching and I, I loved sharing and I loved engaging and connecting with the students that I had. Um, so that's, that's how my journey of teaching astrology began. It was in my very early 20s. And that really pertains to my fifth harmonic chart where I have Sun, Mercury, Jupiter all conjunct in the third house. And here I am now um, teaching through YouTube, which is a, a fairly recent thing. I only started uh, doing these YouTube videos um, about 18 months ago. And it was born out of um, no planning. It was just simply born out of uh, a sense of feeling um, inspired. Um, it was spontaneous. There was no structure to it. I had no idea what I was doing with YouTube. I, I didn't have somebody sit there with me and say, right, this is, this is how you create a YouTube channel. This is how you create videos. Um, this is what you're going to do, etc." I had none of that. I, I just stumbled into this myself um, and felt very, I felt a calling to actually do this. Um, and I, I feel um, incredibly passionate, uh, incredibly joyous when I make these videos. It's, it enables me to get in touch with, with my creative self, my creative expression, which brings a lot of joy and uh, brings a sense of playfulness for me as well when I'm actually doing these videos. So that's my, um, 
fifth harmonic chart in short, there are other things going on there as well, but I really just wanted to focus on um, this particular triple conjunction, which is not seen in my birth chart, but is seen in my fifth harmonic chart. Um, so I'd really love you guys to, if you already haven't, check out your fifth harmonic chart and see what's there for you. And, you know, maybe you'll notice something that you haven't really, it hasn't been in the forefront of your mind, of your consciousness. Maybe it'll inspire or trigger some, um, you know, really powerful creative expression for you. Or maybe it will further enhance what you are already um, creatively connected to and have been for some time. It will just show you and give you more understanding and information of your own uh, creative self and, and how you can basically bring that forward and share that with everybody and how you can connect to a deeper sense of joy within your own self because the fifth house is about joy, you know. Um, that's the best word that I can think of apart from creativity and creative self-expression as well. Um, so it's gifts and talents that we've been given, that we've been born into. And, you know, there are a lot of people that, for one reason or another, um, they, they don't activate their creative juice and flow. They, maybe they don't have enough confidence in themselves or maybe they think they don't have time, you know, to, to pursue these creative arts or, or creative um, desires or, you know, pathways and so forth. But it can bring so much joy to your life if you can activate it and connect with it and nurture it and um, cultivate it into your life which is why I felt very compelled and very inspired to bring this video to you guys to encourage you to have a look at your big harmony chart. Now, um, I'll just share my screen and uh, just quickly show you guys the chart of Prince, as I said, who is one of my absolutely um, favourite, favourite artists. Uh, Don't need that one. Just to make sure that everything's still okay here. Sorry, to stay with me, guys. I'm having a bit of a technical moment. To make sure it's still recording. Okay, you guys wouldn't have seen that, but it just looks like things kind of stopped. Okay, all right. Back to sharing my screen. So. Go to solar fire. Now, okay, so here is um, the chart of Prince. This is his natal chart, and this is actually a rectified time, which is you could take this down if, if you are interested in accurate times of birth, and if you're a fan of Prince, his uh, rectified time is 6.08 p.m. The time given uh, publicly, and that's recorded, is 6.17 p.m., so it's not too far. Um, but when it comes to um, predictive work, progressions, primary directions and things of that nature, this time difference um, is significant. Anyway, that aside, this is his birth chart. Now, you can see here that naturally he's got a, a Pluto moon opposition, which is a very, very intense aspect and he's got moon in Pisces. Anyway, I'm not here to delineate his natal chart, but I just want you to have a quick look at his natal chart. now. You can see here that the sun is in Gemini and Pluto is very powerfully placed uh, on the MC in his 10th house, it's right up there on the 10th house. So, you know, who he was and what he did and what he gave to the world uh, was transformative. You know, it transformed him, himself, his life path. It was his destiny, it was fated, it was his soul's path um, to create. Um, art in the form of um, transforming, transforming himself and transforming people through his artistry and his talent and his skill and his musicality. I mean, the guy was a genius. You know, he played, I don't know, something like 10 instruments. He, he wrote, uh, you know, probably millions. <laughs> Maybe that's exaggerating, but he wrote a lot of songs. We all know about the vault, you know, where there's literally hundreds and thousands of songs that have never been released um, that are still, you know, uh, I think in the vault. Um, he, you know, he was, he was just, there'll never be another Prince. He was um, one and only 
in the same form that Michael Jackson, I, I view in the same regard as well. And by the way, there's something very interesting with regards to his death and um, his secondary progress chart. And perhaps I'll do a separate video for that, showing you uh, what shows up, which is incredibly, um, uh, it's, it's just so descriptive of, of what happened, how he died. Uh, or at least that he died at that time, because the the actual death, um, there is still uh, a lot that hasn't been, well, the truth hasn't really been revealed. There's a lot of um, speculation, suspicion, um, and what has been given to the public, I don't believe is actually true. I believe it's false. And the secondary progress chart reflects that as well. Anyway, leave that aside. I've just kind of gone off track there. So looking at his natal chart, Venus in Taurus, that's his musicality, you know, that, that's his artistry when you're just looking at the natal chart. And Mars in the fifth house in Aries, that's his creative uh, house as well. It's fifth house is all about creative expression. So much energy, so much energy, drive and passion. Well, look at that Mars in Aries at zero degrees. When you see Mars in Aries at zero degrees, Aries at zero is called a critical degree very powerful place to have any planet at zero degrees of Aries. Very, very powerful. There's something very critical about that planet's expression um, in the lifetime of the individual that certainly describes Prince. Now, as I said, Pluto is up here, conjunct his midheaven, the 10th house, and the sun is in Gemini in the 8th house. Now, if we go to his um, fifth harmonic chart, this is one here. What I want your eyes to notice is the Sun Pluto conjunction. And it's actually conjunct the MC. Now, what happens is when you draw up the fifth harmonic chart, the MC ends up floating around somewhere in the chart. So, whilst this still up here represents the 10th house, it doesn't represent the MC. The MC is represented here where you see the two letters MC, which is the 10th house, but the MC, right? It's the angle. Now, what we see is that the MC is at 16 degrees of Aries and Sun is at 23 degrees of Aries and Pluto is at 29 degrees of Aries. So what happens is in his um, fifth harmonic chart, there is a quintile in his birth chart between the Sun and Pluto, which your eye wouldn't very uh, easily pick up unless you are very technically minded, as I said, um, with astrology. And a lot of astrologers are not, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is um, the power of being able to draw up harmonic charts. It shows you these very important configurations that um, you just simply see right there in the face. So what we have is Sun, Pluto, MC. So this to me describes, in other words, his creative um, uh, art, potential, expression, energy, power, force, um, all of that comes through the sun, Pluto being conjunct. So it, it was a, an, an energy of uh, creativity that he had that was absolutely relentless. It was absolutely soul driving for him. Pluto is a soul. The level of intensity that this man had with his art and the passion he had for it is seen through this Sun-Pluto conjunction on the MC. So there it is. I mean, that now it's important to recognize how powerful this is because you don't see a Sun-Pluto conjunction on the MC in his natal chart. Okay, I showed you his natal chart. The sun is in the eighth house, which that has a whole story unto itself. And Pluto, yes, is on the MC, but you don't see the sun Pluto conjunction. This is the uh, prominent feature that describes his relentless power, energy, spirit, drive, will, transformative ability um, in terms of his life as an artist. And that's indeed what he did. He, from the time he started, I think he started um, 
when he was about 16 years old. He, he would have started earlier with music, but in terms of um, starting to be known to the public, he was 16 or 17, I believe. So from then until his last breath, this man um, spent, you know, almost 24 seven in his studio making music. Even when he went off the radar uh, publicly uh, through that period in the 90s uh, because of the music company, um, uh, I think it was Sony. Um, I think it's Sony, I, I may be wrong there, but anyway, the, the music company that, that he'd um, signed contracts with, uh, who he basically refused to be uh, controlled by them any longer, which is why he spent that period in the 90s wearing the slave symbol on his cheek. He was basically taking a stand um, to these controlling corporate greedy companies who were trying, who basically were just using him and, and just stealing his money and his music, all that sort of stuff. So that's when he, you know, went off the radar and, and just um, he changed his name to a symbol, the artist formerly known as Prince, you probably remember that. Um, and then he bounced back years later, um, creating his own, basically stood in his own uh, power with his own label. He wasn't assigned to any um, music companies and so forth. And he, and he came back and, and he just uh, went on his um, journey again with music and producing music and sharing uh, his gifts and his talents with everybody. Um, and he transformed himself. Now, see, this is the son of Pluto, right? His creativity has undergone enormous periods of transformation. Now, Pluto is the energy that also connects to dying and being reborn, right? Um, it's the energy that um, enables a person to metamorphosize and transform. Um, so it can also point to a person in their life when they disappear, which is what he did. He went off the radar and then reappear because Pluto rules things that disappear and reappear back into life. And that's exactly what he did. He went off the radar, he disappeared, disconnected from the social uh, public world, but he never he never stopped making music. This is that son Pluto. It's a relentless power powerhouse force, driving force, driving his soul to create, to create, to be you know utterly creative in so many different ways. Man was a genius. So there it is, son Pluto conjunct his MC in his fifth harmonic chart, such a beautiful, powerful uh, representation of the fifth harmonic chart, a very, very special soul, a very special human being who has brought so much to the world of music, so many people, uh, for so many decades. You know, we, I feel we were so blessed to have his music. You know, I still listen to his music um, all the time, you know, whether I'm at the gym or at home or wherever. Um, he also did a song called Anastasia. Um, so, you know, I have two of my favourite musicians, Prince made a song called Anastasia and Slash, the guitarist from Guns N' Roses, also made a song called Anastasia. I feel so blessed, you know, to have had two of my favourite musicians uh, making a song called Anastasia. I mean, that's just a personal side note. But, so, that's the uh, big harmonic chart of Prince. Um, let me see, is there anything else that kind of stands out that I want to talk about? Um, I guess we, we can really bring in this um, Venus-Mars opposition. That's a very prominent um, configuration in this fifth harmonic chart as well. And I think from the point of view of, you think about Prince, you know, he was, he was a bit of an androgynous figure in the sense where he had such a resonance with the masculine and the feminine, and he just had this beautiful ability to um, to embrace the feminine and the masculine within him. And when he uh, embraced the masculine, he didn't lose the feminine. When he embraced the feminine, he didn't lose touch with the masculine. He just had this incredible, powerful ability to balance 
the, the feminine and the masculine within him, which I think was reflected so powerfully and so beautifully through his musicality, through his artistry. And I think that when we look at this, you know, Mars in Aries in rulership, Venus in Libra in rulership, so both signs are in their natural um, archetypal energy sign and they're opposite each other. So what do oppositions do? Oppositions usually are polarised, but ultimately when we can uh, bring awareness and consciousness to an opposition, what happens is um, we integrate that energy and it becomes uh, totally balanced within us. And that's exactly what he did. He balanced the Mars within him and he balanced the Venus within him. So you saw the Mars component in his music in terms of his drive, his energy, his passion. But the man had so much energy. He, he never did drugs. He never did alcohol. Um, he was a vegan, actually. Uh, he lived a very healthy life. You know, when he went out and um, so when he did tours and things like that in various countries, um, he would go out and, and socialise in certain clubs and things and um, or he did private, he did a lot of private gigs in private clubs, um, mainly in Europe, I believe, and in the States as well. Never in Australia, unfortunately, but I did get to see Prince. I did go to his last concert, which I feel so grateful and so blessed for. Um, but anyway, when he went to you know, when he uh, did private gigs and things like that or when he went to, um, you know, exclusive little clubs, he would just sit on a table and drink water. That's all he did. And he would just observe the crowd, observe the people dancing. And he loved that. He loved just sitting there and just observing. So he wasn't an artist. And I'm not making any judgments because, um, you know, it is very common for, um, for musicians to take on the path of um, drugs and alcohol and, and so forth. Um, it's part and parcel of, you know, the, the Hollywood kind of lifestyle, I guess you could say, to a certain degree. But everyone has a choice, and, and his choice was to not engage with any of those sorts of things. So he was totally natural. He was 100% organic and natural in the way he lived his life and in the way he made his music. Um, so, yeah, that's that's uh, just a little bit of information on Prince. So I'll just stop sharing my screen. Um, so that's one example. Uh, I was um, trying to find some other examples as well, but I um, I didn't find. Uh, well, I was kind of struggling to think of who I wanted to really talk about um, until, of course, I thought about Prince, and you know, I was just so thrilled that when I did look at his fifth harmonic, it just represented very clearly everything I've just shared with you. So it's a very powerful example. Um, so. I think that's it really. Um, just a couple of other things. Don't forget when you're assessing your fifth harmonic chart um, and there are conjunctions in there, make sure it's not the same conjunction you have in your natal chart, okay? Um, because conjunctions in your natal chart will show up as conjunctions in your fifth harmonic as well, as I said in the beginning. So you need to be looking at both charts to draw the comparison. Um, and you know, the, the combination of the planets that are quintile are going to describe, as I said, your actual creative style, What, how that creative style is going to be expressed. So is it going to be a Jupiter creative style? Is it going to be a Venus style? Is it going to be a Mercury? You know, if it's Mercury, it can be writing and speaking. Now, Mercury is in there for me, and I haven't written any books, and I won't say that I never will. Um, I'm not feeling particularly motivated to write books as such, but I do love communicating um, this wisdom and sharing it, you know. But, you know, I have uh, Venus in my third house, so I love, you know, communicating um, something that I um, feel such a, a, a soulful connection to. My Venus is in Pisces, so yeah, there you have that. Um, so, you know, if it's Uranus, it's going to be something that's, you know, really sort of unusual and um, eccentric even, you know. But it, 
I mean, it can be in, in any of whatever planet it is, it can, it can still be um, dance or music or uh, writing or um, painting. And it can be any of those things and, and uh, you know, much more, many, many other different sorts of creative expressions. But the planets are going to describe the how, the how of how that energy, that creative juice is activated for you, you know, how, what's going to really tap into that for you and how you can bring it out. So there it is. That's your fifth harmonic chart. Hopefully this video has inspired you to look at your own fifth harmonic chart if you already haven't. It's a beautiful chart to explore and to play around with. Um, there are, as I said, there are many, uh, uh, lots of other harmonic charts. The other one that I really love and that's very big in, um, in Vedic, uh, Hindu, Indian astrology is the ninth harmonic. The ninth harmonic is, uh, in Indian astrology, is viewed as being just as important as the actual natal chart in terms of what it reflects. So I might just bring the ninth harmonic into another video uh, for you guys soon. Thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for your comments and questions. Um, love and appreciate all of you. Thank you so much and um, many blessings and see you soon with another topic. Thanks. Bye.